Welcome back. We are here on Etero looking at the commodities market and the precious metals market. And this is going to be my daily forecast for Friday, November 6, 2020. It has been a really interesting day today. A lot of action in both stocks, in the indices, uh, commodities, and also precious metals. So if you like to support this channel, you're welcome to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button down here in the corner, hit the like button and the bell button in order to see our newest videos. We have a signal service on Patreon with a lot of new, a lot of traders um, active there as well. And if you join, you'll also get access to the full uh, technical analysis for commodities. So we'll look at the US dollar index first because this fell like an absolute rock today. However, we did fall towards major support and we pulled back so this area here at uh, 92.59 has been support here 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 and so on and so on so historically this has been support and we also pull back from this area however it doesn't mean that we can fall even further if we do then we will fall all the way down to this area here which is at 91.73 and the reason why I say that is because these technical indicators have some um, room to the downside. So, for example, the RSI is at 40 at this moment. It is not oversold at this point. The CCI is very uh, bearish at this point. So is the stochastic and so is the MACD. So we may fall further. And the next stop is basically down here. And I don't expect it to fall further than that. If we pull back, then the 50 moving average will be resistant and then we'll uh, try to get to these highs um, of yesterday at the 94.3. And at this point, I do believe that we go lower, a little bit lower, or trade sideways and then head up again. I don't expect us to basically fall this one. This, well, there are many reasons for this. Main reason for this is basically the election and an anticipation of stimulus. And um, to be fairly honest, that is just a fool's hopes at this moment because uh, we don't have a new president and we don't know who's going to be the new president and it doesn't really matter who of them becomes president, there's most likely not going to be a stimulus bill in the next coming months, maybe February. So if you look at oil, we can see that we have rallied the last three trading days significantly, all the way from... $33 all the way up to uh, $39. At this point, oil is starting to look weak. We are running into major resistance here at the 50 uh, moving average, and it is technically about time. Um, there is seriously no real, um, there's no real demand for oil at this point. World economy is doing fairly badly, and uh, and therefore, oil, the demand for oil is, is not going to be there. So I've just been waiting for um, a fairly negative candlestick, which this one is, and in order to enter this market for a sell. And um, that is also what I did. So I expect oil to drop and drop significantly within the next few trading days. Uh, probably uh, we'll test these high lows first at the 37, 36, and then we'll go all the way down to 33. And if uh, everything goes to plan, we'll go all the way down to $30. There is no real anticipation for a major increase in oil, even though there is a stimulus plan or whatsoever. We have had already three of them, and this is technically what happened in this period here. And this is basically what happened. Nothing happened, technically. We're in the same place as we have been for several months now, and the world economy is just getting worse, and the coronavirus is just getting worse, and therefore we are technically just going to go lower. We have had all of these warnings here. This is basically a lower low. So if you compare to this, we basically can write a, a lower trend line here. Um, and I... Not 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure that we'll follow this all the way um, co very consistently. I don't expect us to fall like this. I'm expecting us to fall very slowly to the downside, all the way down to 13. So let's see what happens. But at this point, I think we are running into major resistance here. We may go a little bit further. 
but the very highs are 31 points, uh, 45, but I don't even expect us to get there. Probably a 30, then, then we'll definitely drop. Technical indicators, they are sh turning around, especially the RSI is turning around, and the, so is the CCI, so is the stochastic, and the MACD is basically flat. So if we have an increase in the US dollar index, this will fall as a rock. So natural gas. We can see that we have started to decrease significantly and we are approaching our nearly our target. No, oh, where did that go? So, sorry. We are nearly approaching our target, which is here. So our target is right there. So at some stage, the, probably tomorrow, we will touch this line if we are lucky. And that is probably your best opportunity to enter this market for a buy. Technical indicators for this are dreadful at the moment, but this trend line has been significant support and there's no reason for to expect that we will basically break through this resistance line or resist this support line. So a buy here with a stop loss underneath, that is a, a golden opportunity. Uh, technical indicators are looking really bad. Probably should wait until they turn around a little bit, uh, especially the CCI. That will basically warn you whether or not you should enter this market. So we look at copper. So copper was all around the place today. Uh, we rallied a little bit. Um, technical indicators for copper are they are fairly mixed. CCI, uh, CCI is quite, quite bullish. The RSI is flat. The, the stochastic is technically flat, and so is the MACD. There is no reason for copper to rally here. Um, main anticipation is basically a stimulus and that will basically be a solution to all the world's problems. No, I don't think so. And so the very highs I expect are around here. It's at 3.1. We pierced that today, pulled back. So a pullback from here is kind of expected. I also believe that we'll go and break through the 50 moon average. I have no interest in basically buying this. I could be completely wrong, but but to buy copper in a, in a declining world economy, that just seems strange. Usually what happens in um, recession and so on is something similar to this, not this. It definitely, this does not happen. You can look at every single recession or downturn in the world economy basically forever, it always ends like this and never ever like that. So there is a lot of room to the downside for copper and, and not to the upside. If so, and it's pure speculation. If you look at uh, gold. So I technically missed this today. I did expect gold to go the other way and not to the upside. So we have pierced significantly in the 50 moving average and now we are going to test this area here if we manage to get through this area here then we are going to first of all to 2000 and then we're going to 2100 i did expect this market to go um down towards 1850 or 1800 before going higher but at this point we have pierced the 50 moving average significantly. Technical indicators are very bullish for gold. However, we need to get through this area here in order to go to these all time high. We have been here several times before. Uh, we spent more than a month within this area here, tried to get through um, 1950, 1970, and we just did not get through that price level. So if we can get through this area, then we'll go to the all-time highs and then we we'll go significantly higher. A break below the 50 moving average opens the door to 1850, 1800. And this was basically my plan in order to enter this market. At this point, no interest in basically entering this market for a buy until we break through this area here. So we look at silver. We can see that silver has also rallied. We have pierced the 50 moving average. We are basically trading at this moment above the 50 moving average. If we can get a green candlestick above here, then that is a really, really bullish shine. But 
we have to test this area here. Similar to gold, this was an area that we tested for a very long time. Did not get through that. If we can manage to get through it now, then we go to around uh, 29.8. And after that, to 30. Break below here opens the door to these lows, which is at $22, then $21, and then to the 200 moving average around $20. So technical indicators for this, they are all very, very, very bullish at this point. And the RSI is basically that there's a lot of room to the upside. We're not even close to be overbought. But, but just bear in mind, there is a lot of resistance just above the 50 moving average. So you look at Kakoa. No, sorry. Here. So Kakoa has rallied today. We are at the moment at 2.3. And at this point, we may go towards the 200 moving average before we pull back. So we are trading within the highs of 2.7 and the very lows at 2.0. So just bear in mind, almost all markets today, it was, uh, it was uh, commodities, precious metals, um, indices, stocks, and so on rally today. Reason? Well, one of the reasons probably is the election and that Donald Trump is not going to be president anymore. It doesn't look like he's going to win and therefore Biden is going to win. Last time Biden took office together with the Barack Obama, they were in the midst of the worst recession in modern history. And they technically saved the world economy by injecting a lot of, of stimulus. So that's probably one reason that if history repeats itself, then Joe Biden is probably one of the best people to um, be able to fix at least the, the United States economy and also the world economy. So things are rallying on those hopes that he will basically do the same thing as they did back in 2009. So this looks bullish. All of the indicators are turning around. We will find significant resistance here at the 200 moving average and definitely at the 50 moving average. And if this breaks, then we'll go all the way to the 2.7. So at this point, this looks like it has turned around. This looks very impressive uh, to the upside. And um, if we break down, of course, this will be in support, break below here, then we'll go all the way down to 2.0. Just bear in mind, this was a rally today, not based on world economy, but based on anticipation. And we have no idea who won the election. The election can turn around and Donald Trump can win and then all circumstances are um, different again. So look at Platinum. So Platinum rallied above the 50 moving average, which was anticipated, pulled back a little bit, and we have tried this before. We did it here. And we pulled back all the way towards the 200 moving average after that. Technical indicators for Platinum are very bullish. So uh, this may be the time. If we see a green candlestick above here, that may be that we, a sign that we are about to break out of this room that we have been for such a long time now. I don't favor the downside due to the, a lot of support underneath here, which uh, I can write up right here. This will be entire support and um, this area here will also be significant support so there's a lot of support underneath and therefore i do favor the upside in this market and the technical indicators they are looking very nice for this market so we are most likely if we can rally tomorrow as well we will most likely go to these highs 977 and then to 1000 if we look at sugar We can see that we pull back and at this point we may go towards the 50 moving average which will basically be our buying opportunity. We have uh, another signal here which we most likely will test if the 50 moving average will break. It breaks. So if it breaks then we'll go towards this trend line here and that will basically be an even better entry to this market than the 50 moving average. 
Um, so technical indicators for sugar are looking very, uh, uh, very bearish at this point. So this is a possible entry, or even better, this this will act as uh, as support. So just underneath the 50 moving average, or this trend line here is a possible buy-in. So no interest in basically shorting this, even though I know that it will go further. But a pullback is a buying opportunity in this market. So wheat. We can see that we tried to rally and we gave a lot of it back. So I this is a horrible, horrible trade. The people that basically entered here, they lost a lot of money or... Uh, basically they blew up their accounts and this is the difficulty of basically trading some of these commodities um, if you don't catch it down here and instead try to catch it on the way up around here well you can get caught and that i'm pretty sure many people were uh, caught here because this rallied so significantly uh, the entry to this market if i write it up is you have a trend line here best entry would have been around this area here we didn't get there we got down here but this is a really nasty candle so we may pull back towards this trend line and and towards this 50 moving average and that is the right space or right price level to enter this market if you want to minimize your risk technical indicators for this market are fairly mixed so if you look at the CCI, it is very bullish at this point. RSI is flat, the stochastic is flat, and the MACD is technically rounding off here. So I would wait and see if we fall towards the 50, this uh, trend line or the 50 moving average, then there is a, a possible buy-in because we are in uptrend. This is a significant uptrend and very bullish market. So. There's no reason to expect this to break the 50 moving average, but this was a really nasty pullback from the market. So hope you find this helpful. You're welcome to support our channel by subscribing, by clicking this button here, hit the like button and the bell button in order to see our newest videos, and you're welcome to join us on Patreon. A lot of traders have already joined, and uh, it is a, looking like a fantastic forum. Yes, good luck, and thank you very much.